There is a fascinating history with bots cheating sleep on RuneScape. Trust me, this is as historic as it gets when it comes to RuneScape cheaters. We're taking a deep dive into the early days of RuneScape botting, how that led to the introduction of the now removed fatigue system, and how botters created a whole new class of programs known as sleepers to get around this anti-botting measure. There's many of them. From a programming standpoint, they were advanced, especially for the time and especially for the botting scene back then. I'm gonna walk you through all of it. I've explored a lot of RuneScape Classics history, but this is one of the most interesting things that I've come across. By the way, if you're a RuneScape fan looking to materialize your love for the game, my girlfriend and I are creating RuneScape figurines out of high-grade resin. We cast each one from a silicon mold and hand paint them with a combination of airbrushing and hand brushing. We just finished our latest batch of Vorkafs. They're in stock right now on the website. And then there's a couple pre-orders that are open. Check it out, link is in the description. Let's get on with the video. First, you have to understand how bots were affecting the game way back in 2001 when it was first released. People found out really fast that they could use mouse recorders to record their actions in game and then play them back indefinitely, creating the first very primitive bots. It got worse. A botter under the name Pyrax wrote and released the first botting software for RuneScape. He called it AutoMiner and it was used to bot both mining and fishing. I've got a real treat for you. I managed to get the source code to this bot. Let's take a look. For 2002, man, I'm telling you, this is some clean code. It's good stuff, really. It shows the battle that Jagex has been up against since day one. It worked by taking the coordinates of where your inventory menu was, where your pickaxe was, and where two mining spots were. Once you had those set, the program will call the mouse module to perform the clicks at those specific coordinates on your screen in the certain order that would make your character mine. Of course, people were setting this thing up to do all sorts of other activities too, fishing being another big one. Once it finished running, it would play a little sound. Check it out. Wonder if anybody used it and remembers that sound. This bot became so popular that Jagex actually specifically mentioned it on their website as a tool that you're not allowed to download and use. Of course, with the problem getting worse and worse, Jagex had to implement something to break it. And their solution was to make the camera slightly move over a long period of time when it was just staying still. Remember, these bots were set up to click on fixed coordinate points on the screen. With the camera now slowly rotating, eventually they would no longer be clicking on that rock or that fishing spot. And overnight, when this update went live, the mouse recorder bots were completely annihilated and the auto miner bots were completely gone too. The game was bot free. But remember how nice that code was? The theme of quality developers working on trying to cheat RuneScape continued. Soon after, a bot known as Roombot was released and also an updated version of AutoMiner by somebody else, but this time using color detection instead of just coordinates. These bots completely circumvented that previous camera rotation anti-cheating feature, and so Jagex was forced to come up with another anti-cheating measure to stop these bots as they started to run rampant. Their solution was the fatigue system, and by all means it was a clumsy implementation. On its release in November of 2002, Whenever you trained a skill in game or did some type of activity, your fatigue would increase. Once it reached 100%, you could no longer gain experience or resources from the things that you were doing. You would have to walk all the way back to a city and find a bed to sleep in to reset your fatigue. This annoyed the real players to no end. To make matters worse, bots could actually get around this. RuneBot was that advanced. The thing was that if you were a real player, you had to walk all the way back to a city to find a bed and sleep in. And back in the classic days, getting around was not fast. Teleports were sparse and there was no run system. You had to walk everywhere that you went. So six months later, partly in response to player complaints and partly in response to bots circumventing the sleeping system anyways, they implemented an item you could carry in your inventory called the sleeping bag. It would let you take a nap anywheres and reset your fatigue system, but they overhauled the fatigue system with this. You see, previously you would go to the bed, you would click sleep, and it would just reset your fatigue, but now they added a capture that you would have to solve before waking up. I know, when using websites we've all had to go through captures before, they're good at determining if somebody is a bot or if somebody is a real person. And that's why Jagex chose to implement this, but the botters had a way around it. This is how the whole class of programs known as sleepers came to be invented. 
Just shy of two decades have passed since sleepwalkers were originally conceived, and so many of them have been lost to history. There's just no solid references on them existing anymore. In fact, it's even hard to find people that played back in the day and were involved in this illicit botting scene that remember them. That being said, I did a lot of digging and I found some really great information on two of the prevalent sleepwalkers. The first one, and the older one of the two, was known as Sleepwalker and Fatigue Operator. It was two separate programs. And then the second one was known as Leo Sleep, and this made significant advancements as you will come to see. So back to Sleepwalker and Fatigue Operator. The first reference that we have comes from the Little Black Book of Cheating. I did a whole video on this book. It's one of the best references that we have from the early days of RuneScape abuse. But check it out. Not only do we get to see these really awesome images of the software, but we learn that it was being used in tandem with Scar shit compared to Roombot, which was just another advancement in cheating software at the time that everybody was using. If we really want to learn how this software worked though, we have to head over to the creator's website, kinetics.com, specifically the Wayback Machine. Looking all the way back to the 10th of June 2004, we get the write-up on how this worked and where you could download it. It's amazing that this still exists, so let's take a look. How it worked is state it clear as day here. He writes, Basically, it allows other cheaters to type your sleep words for you when you're in game and while you sleep in real life. The problem they were having is they absolutely needed the human input on those captures in the sleeping interface. But they didn't want to stick around and babysit their bots all day to enter in those captures. So, the whole sleepwalker and fatigue operator system here comprised a way for them to answer a bunch of sleeping words or captures, whatever you want to call them, for other botters at once, and in turn they would earn credits that they could spend to have other botters later answer their own sleeping words for them, letting them AFK. He goes on to break down both of the programs. Sleepwalker was used to monitor the bot client. When it saw you were sleeping in game, it would take a little image of your sleep word, and then it would fire it off to other users on the fatigue operator program. So the fatigue operator program was the one you wanted to boot up when you want to answer a bunch of sleep words to earn yourself some credits. And this would simply show sleep words from other botters, and if you were the first one to answer it correctly, you would get plus one fatigue operator points, which you could spend to get your own sleep words answered. It wasn't perfect though. One of the gotchas is that if nobody had any credits to spend, then it was impossible to earn any credits, effectively nullifying the system. I spoke to one guy who was actually using this back in the day. He told me in situations like this, a developer would spawn some credits for somebody to get them going again. Now here's a treat. I managed to find the original thread posted in 2003 shortly after the fatigue update introducing the captures by Kinetics himself. In this thread, he is proposing his idea to get around this new change. Check out this glimpse into his original thought. He said he was having a conversation with his friend, and the idea came to him that cheaters could answer sleep words for each other. But he saw one fatal problem with it, and that's that cheaters are selfish and they're not going to do this without any gain for themselves. So his original idea was to make it a system where you pay RuneScape GP for sleep word credits and when other botters answer those sleep words for you, they'll actually get the GP that you paid. The rest of this original thread is some ideas on how the actual technical implementation might work, but then we get a glimpse into the comments section below. People are not really a fan of the paying money idea, and eventually Evil Cow God chimes in with the idea that, hey, instead of paying money for these credits, what if we just make it a system where people earn credits by answering the words for other people? Kinetics actually didn't accept this idea right away, we see that by his response, but later on in the thread, more and more people start to adopt Evil Cow God's idea as the right way to approach this. And while we're here, how can I not point out this beautiful application architecture diagram that Kinetics drew up for how this thing could actually work? Again, this is a real glimpse into what Jagex is up against with respect to preventing bots. They had just implemented this change to put captures into the sleeping bags, and no sooner is Kinetics on here drying up these diagrams to find a way to circumvent it. It would be foolish to think that botters have not got more sophisticated than they were in 2003. Let's shoot back over to Kinetics' website though. The thing I love about this guy is that he really documented the history of his stuff, and so we learn how this sleepwalker program progressed. Of course, there was the initial idea, that's the form thread that we discussed, but version 1 was actually written by Evil Cow God, and it worked over IRC, it used an insecure web server, and in version 2, Kinetics took over the project because Evil Cow God got bored of it. 
this is where things get a little more interesting. So he did an entire rewrite, but they found that the cheaters, like he originally thought, weren't typing in words for other cheaters. And so this is when they actually had to implement that point system we talked about. He said the original implementation was done through a local storage entry on the people's own computers, and they were so determined not to write words for other people that they found a way to modify this registry entry so they could get free points. Again, creating this problem that nobody was entering words for other cheaters. So in version five and six of the program, he made a modification that this would actually be stored in a database, you would have to sign up for it, and this solved that problem. Then it went on to version 7, and development was taken on by other people, and unfortunately this is where we lose the history of Sleepwalker. It was used for some time. It wasn't until the introduction of new Sleepwalker programs that used optical content recognition to eliminate the human aspect that Sleepwalker would finally die. So let's talk about one of those, the one that we have the most information on, Leo Sleep. This came to be sometime in late 2004, early 2005. I don't have a great exact date. Unfortunately, the source code for Leo Sleep isn't available, so we can't decipher how it worked that way, but there is some information I managed to find. So number one, this thing used optical content recognition to look at an image of the captcha and determine what the text might be. More interestingly, Keep in mind, this is 2004. This is actually an artificial intelligence and machine learning technique. Specifically, the guy who created this trained a support vector machine to recognize each individual letter. I found the like one download still available of this program online, and we can even see into the model.txt file, which is actually responsible for training this AI. And you can see here that there's 26 different classes defined. That's one for each letter. Check this out. This is a recreation, so it might not be totally accurate, but this is the letter set that Jagex was using to generate those captures. The interesting thing here is that if Jagex just changed their letter set, it would actually completely break these optical content recognition programs because they would probably need to retrain their models all over again. This was the reason, actually, that Kinetics didn't do this approach in the first place. He wrote about that on his website. One other thing about Leo Sleep is that I'm not convinced that it was super accurate at its optical content recognition because he also included this dictionary.txt file. This is a creative solution though for it not being very good. So if you ever use Leo Sleep, and unfortunately I don't have any videos of this, when it was trying to find the right word, it would actually do many entries, like 10 or 20 entries before it got one right. I assume what it was doing is using op optical content recognition to get its best guess, and then going into this dictionary.txt file and finding the closest match. For example, the optical content recognition might determine uh, that the word is color, but it got one of the O's wrong. It thinks the O is an A. And so he would have an algorithm in there like to find the closest possible match in the dictionary to what the OCR guessed and then it would actually enter that instead so instead of color with an A it would put color with both the O's. That's speculation on how this thing worked but let's talk a little bit about what he wrote on his website theintensity.com. There was two modes that you could run Leo Sleep in, a bot mode and a client mode. Client mode was for people that were just playing RuneScape normally that wanted to use Leo Sleep to enter the captures for them. There was a little crosshair that you would drag onto your RuneScape window, this is how it knew where to look, and when it determined that you were sleeping, it would try to enter the word for you, simple as that. Bot mode is where things get more interesting, so we learn here that bots back in the day actually used to save a BMP of the CAPTCHA itself. So when you select a bot mode, you would have to point to the directory where h.bmp would be saved, and when it detected that a new sleep CAPTCHA had been saved, it would attempt to solve it from that. Leo Sleep was originally for download on theintensity.com, but unfortunately, the Wayback Machine doesn't have much to offer as to what was on this website. I hope you've been enjoying these history videos because I sure do have a blast making them. Don't forget about those RuneScape figurines, they go fast, KBDs are already sold out unfortunately. Link is in the description. Thank you so much, I'll see you guys in the next one.